Hi debaters, today we are going to talk about cross-examination questions, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, this is intended for people that are beginning, but I don't think it ever hurts to review some unsaid rules. The cross-examination questions you ask and how you respond to them can and will determine if you win or lose a round. It is incredibly important to be good at asking and answering these sorts of questions. We're gonna go through some unsaid rules of cross-examinations or cross X's or CX. There isn't a debate rule book and a lot of times debaters are looking for cut and dry rules about what can and can't happen. Is this allowed? Is that allowed? But there isn't really a rule book, but there are things that you should and shouldn't do. The first unsaid rule is to face the judge when you're asking and when you're answering cross-sex questions. When it's your turn to speak, you'll stand up and you're supposed to face the judge, which feels unnatural because you would think that you would face the person who is asking or who you were asking the question to. However, it's expected in this sort of debate to face the judge. This can be a great thing because your judges will show you whether or not they're happy with your performance based on their facial expressions and body movements. So if they sort of fur their brow or, you know, uh, roll their eyes or look confused, then you know that maybe you need to change your game. Um, if they look interested or excited by what you're doing, then you may want to continue on. So it is helpful to look at the judge. You can glance at your opponent every once in a while. That's definitely allowed and respectful. Um, and you can definitely look at your packet of notes or your evidence packet. Uh, that can be expected. Don't look at it just to look at it. But if you actually think you can find a direct quote that you can use in your answer, then definitely feel free to refer to that packet. You are allowed to do that or your notes page. The second rule is that if you're asking the questions, if it's your turn to ask cross-examination questions, don't let your opponent ask you questions. That's not how it works. It's your turn to ask questions and they answer. So you can politely respond to them that it's your turn to ask questions. So let's say you asked a really good question and then the opponent answers and then follows up with, well, what is blah, blah, blah. You can say, uh, thank you, but it's my time to ask the questions. That would be my best advice. Everyone has a different style, but you just wanna make sure you're polite and professional. The third unsaid rule of cross-examination is to not let the opponent take up a bunch of time answering your questions. A lot of teams will use this as a tactic to take up your time and they'll go on and on citing facts and you know, explaining things away and your two minutes are suddenly gone and you've only been able to ask them one question when you might've had three or four really good ones. Um, so don't let them extend their arguments during your cross-examination time. You can respond politely and kindly, just cut them off with thank you, and or you could just start asking the next question either way. If the opponent doesn't know the answer to the question, um, this can be a touchy situation. You wanna make sure that you're polite and you give them a chance, but a lot of times it becomes really apparent that your opponent is not going to be able to come up with the answer, and the polite thing to do is to move on. It allows you more time to ask new questions, and it shows that you have a heart. Um, if the judge sees you just standing there and letting them suffer um, by not knowing what to do like a deer in headlights, the judge is going to think that you're heartless. Why would you not move that along? They may even move things along for you, which is not a good sign. Um, they're gonna feel sorry for the opponent the longer they stand there staring. So don't give them the chance to feel that way. Um, just ask your opponent, would you like for me to move on or I'll move on to the next question or just ask your next question. The fourth rule is to take up as much as you, time as you can to answer a question. You want this to be reasonable. You're not filibustering. You're not trying to be obvious that you're taking up time. But instead of just saying yes or no, or I think so, or whatever, try to back it up with some facts or quotes from the card. This is hard to do hard to do at the beginning of a season because you don't really know a whole lot about your cards yet. But as the season moves on, you'll remember little parts and that you can throw in. You can, so you can say, as I stated in this card, and then you can pick up your evidence binder and read straight from it. Take up as much time as you can without being ridiculous because this takes time from your opponent. It won't allow them to ask questions and it's um, they probably will cut you off if they've gotten the same advice as you, but do your best to give as much as you can in response. The fifth rule is to ask questions about things that you know they mentioned. Take notes when they're making their speeches. 
you have to take notes the entire time, even if it's your partner talking. And then as they're making their speech, you and your partner can mark which go-to questions that you might want to use. You might have written down some great ones that you know that they're really good to ask, and that's fine. But as they're reading, you should be marking them. You shouldn't just always ask the same questions. Because one of the worst things you can do is ask a question about a card that your opponent didn't read. So you might say, you mentioned that 85,000 police officers were blah, blah, blah. And then they say, I didn't actually read that card. If they didn't read that card and you said that they did, it just shows that you weren't paying attention, you weren't writing it down, and it looks really bad to the judge. The sixth rule is to be encouraging, but not overly confident in your partner when they're asking or answering questions. So when cross-sex time is going on, um, it's a stressful time. And if your partner doesn't answer the question the way that you would have and you get upset or angry with them, or if you interrupt them or roll your eyes or make any kind of faces or show your emotions, that can affect your judge. They may think that your partner is doing a really great job and you looking angry could mean that they catch on to the fact that your partner's not doing a good job. So that can really hurt your team. Instead, take notes um, while your partner is asking or answering questions. It is okay to smile at your partner as they sit down after a really good cross X or maybe really, really quietly say good job or mouth it or give them a little pat on the back. But don't say anything like you got them or you killed it or high five or, you know, make a smirk at each other. Because trust me, your judge is watching and they'll be the judge of whether or not you did well or not, not you and your partner. Rule number seven is sort of like that. And it's don't be a jerk. There are a lot of teams that are new and aren't as good as debating as what you're used to seeing at practice or for yourself or anything like that. And the last thing you want to do is be a jerk about it. Don't say anything negative about the other team or to the other team. Be kind and encouraging. Tell them that you hope they do well or good luck during the round. Don't say things that's going to make them scared or intimidated. Don't ignore them. Don't cold shoulder them. Be friendly and represent our school well. We don't want to be seen as the team that acts like jerks. Um, unfortunately, but also just the way the world works, when you win a lot, a lot of times people assume that you're a jerk. Um, and we've had some great work and some hard work done by the team. And so sometimes people will come in and say, oh, there's Sutton. And you want to make sure that you represent the school well by showing that you're a good person, that you've worked hard, that, you know, the coach didn't do all the work for you. You did it yourself. Um, so just be polite and kill them with kindness. Um, another thing to not look like a jerk is to not ask them to define what a word means just to make them look stupid. So if they mispronounce a word or you know that they don't know what a word means because it's a really tough word and you happen to know the definition of it, don't ask them to define what they meant by it. Um, it, it just makes it, it's clear to the judge as an adult or even a college student that you're trying to make them look dumb. And that's just a waste of your time. Um, if the other team can't answer the question or you can't answer the question, move on. Um, ask for the next one or uh, like I mentioned in, earlier in the video, just give them a chance to answer and then move on to the next question. But don't just stand there staring at them like, ha ha, look at this, I got you, because that's not going to be impressive to your judge. The eighth rule is to not rely on a list of questions that you always ask. A lot of the best cross-ex questions I've ever heard were written while the opponent was making their speech. Judges and opponents are going to start to notice that you repeat the same questions over and over month after month. Um, and if the judges notice, they're going to take points off. And if the opponents remember your question, they're going to look it up and they're going to have a good response for next time. So it's it's important that you don't just have a printed out list of questions. In fact, that's something that I might even take points off for if I were a judge. Uh, a lot of students or debaters want a list of cross-sex questions to ask, but that's not really how it works. The questions have to come up organically as the round is going. Uh, you can definitely have some ideas of what you're going to ask and some questions that you like to ask, but not everyone should be asking the same questions every round. The ninth rule is to write down the questions that you were asked in a round that you struggled to answer, and then you can find the answer as soon as possible. So I think the best strategy for this is to ask your partner to please write down the cross-sex questions that you're asked during a round. So that way you can focus on answering the questions while your partner is writing down the question. 
That way later you can review that or share that with the team so that we can all know the answer to it. Um, so I highly recommend that your partner writes down all the questions that you were asked and maybe whether or not you, you know, needed a little help answering them or if you did a great job answering them. Uh, it's really helpful to share those kinds of experiences with your teammates. The last rule is to do your very best to answer all questions. Most of the time, if you really stop, calm down, and think about what they're asking you, you can find a way to say something that will back up your argument. When a debater says, I don't know, or that's not in the packet, or I never said that, or they're just flipping through their binder randomly to kill time until the two minutes is up, that's not a good thing. Um, most of the time you know the answer, or if you would give yourself a second to breathe and understand what they're asking, then you'd be able to come up with an answer. Asking them continually to repeat the question or rephrase the question when you know you don't know the answer is not a benefit. Even if you're not answering the question directly, give them some sort of fact that backs up your argument. Just try to say something um, and then they'll move on. Thank you so much for um, joining me for this video. Cross-examination questions are super important and oftentimes will determine whether or not you've won or lost a round. So every, after every debate, you need to evaluate what questions you asked that were successful, which ones you asked that were not good, which ones you could answer, which ones you couldn't answer, and then share with each other.